No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome to join us today. This is the fourth Sunday of Advent. We are getting ever closer to the Nativity, to the big trip to Bethlehem, but we're not there yet. This is still Advent, and so it's still a time of waiting and ever-increasing anticipation. Today we are finding love in, and of course we do that work together to fill in that blank, we will hear Mary's song of praise, and it comes just after last week's story. You might remember we talked about the story of Mary visiting Elizabeth. We called it kind of a girl's weekend getaway, and the exuberant conversations occurring perhaps in Elizabeth's entryway. And so really today is the song in response, Mary's song of response, immediately following that story. So it's in some ways part two today. And we're glad that you are here to join in it all. And I do want to welcome you also on Christmas Eve morning at six o'clock. You will find the video just as you do every week. You'll find it available to you. And we invite you to worship with us this Christmas Eve. We invite you to share the service with whoever you feel would need a message of hope this time of year. All are truly welcome to share in that service. We've been working hard and we're glad to have have you join us for that. For now, let us worship the God truly of love. Each of the previous three weeks of Advent, we've been sharing a story with you to better define the theme of the week, which of course today is love. And I thought that I would just pull a trick and this story is actually all about waiting. If you've ever encountered Piggy and Gerald before, you're in for a treat. If you haven't, you have two new best friends. This is about waiting and it is a children's book, but I think there is truly, truly something for everyone in this book because because we're all waiting for something, whether it's uh, family to gather, maybe even through Zoom this year or particular gifts that you're looking forward to your loved one opening. We're all waiting for something right now. And so we join Piggy and Gerald as they wait. And you just have to love this book. And it's often used for early readers. So, Gerald, I have a surprise for you. Yeah, what is that? The surprise is a surprise. Oh, is it big? Yes. Is it pretty? Yes. Can we share it? Yes. I cannot wait. You will have to wait. What? Why? The surprise is not here yet. So I will have to wait for it. Yes. Grrrr! Oh well, if I have to wait, I will wait. I am waiting. Waiting is not easy. Piggy, I want to see your surprise now. I am sorry, Gerald, but we must wait. Grrrr! I am done waiting. I do not think your surprise is worth all this waiting. I will not wait anymore. 
Okay, I will wait some more. It will be worth it. Grown! Peggy! We have waited too long! It is getting dark! It is getting darker! Soon we will not be able to see each other. Soon we will not be able to see anything. We have wasted the whole day. Well, um, we have waited and waited and waited and waited. And for what? For that. This was worth the wait. I know. It too will be worth the wait this coming week. In the ancient world, people lit fires to mark the darkness of winter and to pray for the return of the light. Today, as we gather in our homes with Advent wreaths made by our children, these candles remind us of the coming light of Christ. In our Advent waiting, we light again the first. But we're going to have to start over again. <coughs> Hope. The second, peace. Uh. The third, joy. And the fourth candle, love. Uh. <laughs> soon, very soon, we'll see God's love in the baby Jesus. How do you know someone loves you? Hugs. Hugs. Hey. Love you. <laughs> yeah. How do you show your love for others? Hugs. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> We hear the words from the prophet Isaiah. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. Let's pray together. God of love, may we know your love so we can love others. Amen. The Kitzman household is hanging on the Jesse tree, kneeling Mary. Mary's yes to God allowed her to become Jesus' mother. Right away, she spoke prophetically and sang about what her son would do in the world. Many didn't believe Mary and her news. Still today, Women and others who experience sexual violence or harassment are routinely dismissed or denied, just as Mary's son Jesus upturned social customs. The hashtag MeToo movement has opened conversations and pathways toward a changed and safer culture for all. We the Langs hang on the Jesse tree, the star which pointed the way the stable in Bethlehem, a cradle of hope. We hang on the justice tree, a symbol of our church, a beacon in our community. 
We offer food for our hungry neighbors, a place of shelter, an inclusive welcome, and other ministries to be hope, peace, joy, and love to our community and well beyond. Hi kids, come on forward for children's time. Looks like we have two boxes to open this week. So should I start with the red one first or the question mark one first? The red one, that's what I thought. Okay, let's see. Now you always want to look at the card when you're opening a gift. And oh, oh no. It says do not open until Christmas. Kids, we have to wait on this one. But, oh, and it sounds so fun. There seem to be so many things in there. Well, I guess we'll have to wait for this one. We'll wait until Christmas Eve later this week. Ah, now we have our question mark box. And certainly I can hear some things in here this week. Let's find out together what they may be. Oh, more animals. I remember last week we pulled out the shepherd and the sheep and we remember that they were out in the field when they heard the good news that the baby was born, the baby Jesus, that the Mary, Mary the mommy and Joseph the daddy there were waiting. Mary had the baby in her belly and so all the animals were there to celebrate and share in the good news and we'll find out exactly why there were so many animals on, um, in a couple of days and we have a camel here and a cow and this looks to be a donkey and I think there was something special about the donkey but we have to wait. Today I thought we would review again all of the characters by continuing in our story and we'll actually redo some of it and you'll be able to hear how that story all comes together. We've heard bits and pieces before but now it will all come together for you. It's Christmas time and what do you see? Santas and reindeers and Christmas trees. Stockings and bows and presents galore, but Christmas is so much, oh, so much more. It's about, can you say this word with me? Jesus. How to this world he came, and ever since then it's not been the same. For you see, he was born a baby for glory. It's a wonderful, awesome, amazing story. And again, we've heard parts of it. This is the story from the very first Sunday of Advent when we put out the Mary there. Let's start with the angel who came to bring good news that Mary would soon have the king. Mary was troubled and just couldn't see any possible way this could come to be. Gently, the angel said, don't be afraid. By God's spirit, this child will be made. I am the Lord's servant, Mary did say. Hearing her words, the angel went on his way. And this was the story from last week and we'll continue it this week. Filled with wonder, Mary wanted to tell her cousin Elizabeth, who was with child as well. It was a miracle too, as the angel had told, since cousin Elizabeth was really too old. So Mary hurried to Judah, her cousin, to see. The greeting was special, just what could it be? It was Elizabeth's baby leaping in her with joy, for Mary was carrying the special joy. And we heard this particular story when we brought Joseph into the mix. That was two weeks ago. Now Mary was engaged to Joseph, a man who had a big part in God's greatest plan. Don't be afraid, Joseph heard in a dream, and what was said next made his heart beam. A son will be born, the angels repeated, with news about Jesus. The dream was completed. And here's a new one for today. Up from his sleep, Joe made Mary his bride. Then they set out together to take a long ride. Mary was ready as on a donkey she mounted. For the Romans said, everyone must be counted. One, two, three. 
each man, we would say, each person must return to the place they were born, thus setting the scene for the first Christmas morn. Called the city of David, Bethlehem was its name. With many others to this city they came. And I see that donkey that we put out today over here. And we have lots of other animals. I am sure that it will all come even more together later this week. So we'll continue the story. We'll see you then. In the company of her relative Elizabeth, who was also expecting, Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely, from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, he has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with her for about three months and then returned to her home. My heart sings out with joyful praise to God who raises me, who came to me when I was low and changed my destiny. The Holy One, the Living God, is always full of grace to those who seek their Maker's will in every time and place. The arm of God is strong and just to scatter all the pride. The tyrants stumble from their thrones and vanish like a cloud. The hungry are all satisfied, the rich are sent away. The poor of earth who suffer long will welcome God's new day. The promise made in ages past, at last has come to be. For God has come in power to save, to set all people free. Remembering those who wait to see salvation's dawning day. Our Savior comes to all who weep to wipe their tears away.
I have a number for you. 5,400. 5,400. That is the number of species, animal species throughout the world who can, to whatever extent, sing. 5,400 birds of the air, fish of the sea, well, maybe not fish, but all throughout the world, 5,400 animals can sing. Now, we as humans, part of the animal species, the human species, we also, of course, can sing. But what separates us from the 5400 is that we are the only ones who can sing in harmony. Other, say, birds on a perch can sing together next to each, can sing next to each other, but not together. We as humans are the only ones who can have rhythm and connect and really um, coordinate their song together. They can, you know, animals might be off doing their own thing in pairs, but singing at the same time, um, but we're the ones who can do it in sync. And, and so that's really kind of an awesome thing to think of. And also, I think sometimes why it is so hard to continue to be at home apart from one another for the sake of worship. And many, I've heard from many of you, you say, you know, I miss the singing. I miss the, the singing from the hymnal together, just joining our voices or what have you. And I think because we can do that and because music often comes alive when we share in that experience. In fact, when we do sing together as a congregation, as a choir, our breathing patterns become in sync with one another. We either plan our breath together in the course of a song or a hymn or the, you know, suggestions of when to take that breath, uh, but it also is just sort of in resting in between songs, we learn to breathe together when we sing together. And when we're breathing together, our heartbeats actually start to sink as well. It's pretty phenomenal to learn that all, that our heartbeats, our breathing come together as one. And so no doubt, no doubt, this powerful, transformative worship moment of song, of singing, becomes something that we dearly miss. We get it. Science can explain it. Here today, we hear Mary's song. The scripture we just heard is a full out song of hers. We call it the Magnificat. And like I said earlier, it really truly comes as part two of the story from last week where Mary and Elizabeth meet up and they're both pregnant and the baby in Elizabeth's womb who becomes John the Baptist leaps as soon as leaps in the womb as soon as um, they hear the the sound of Mary's voice and so it's a very jubilant story we remember from last week a joyful story and now this week is is sort of Mary's chance to really sing out like her reprise there and so it comes immediately after is really part of all one story but here we get to showcase Mary's triumphant song I, I've been picturing her, I've been playing with a couple different singers in my mind, but I imagine Mary in this moment to be Dolly Parton, Beyonce, and Aretha Franklin, kind of all in one, larger than life voice that booms out. In every fiber of her being, she is singing praise to her God. And I say her God because this there's such intimacy in, in what we hear from her in this song. She knows God. This is her God to whom she is singing. And every bit of her, it's almost as if she can't help but do anything but sing. 
Here is her song saying, God, you have chosen me and how wondrous you are. Thank you for your faithfulness. And it is a song of her faith right on back to God. It also illustrates to us so powerfully, so beautifully, the who it is that is in her womb now, who will come into the world. And so she gets to showcase her son. This is a proud mama bear. Did I even have to say it? Because she is just, she sees what, she has vision and the foresight to see what her son will do in the world. And she sings of these dramatic reversals, that the hungry will be filled, that those who have been in the last of the line overlooked will no longer be in that position. They will be front and center and part of the community that has often dismissed them. And those that those who have a loud voice, a lot of voice, the ones who take up a lot of space, she sings of this dramatic societal reversal that they then will topple. And so it is not a dear, sweet, meek, merry lullaby that she sings. She is singing a, a love song. This is a love song portraying the dramatic news about to be birthed into the world. Here is a picture of what is coming world. Get ready. A dramatic love song of God, of her son, of her experience that she gets to be a part of. What a love song. Of those 5,400 animal species that we were talking about just a moment ago, many of them tend to stop their song if they detect any sort of presence of danger. So if you've, you know, when you encounter a cricket, say, they often will stop their chirping if you come within relative close proximity there. And I'm sure you know this of birds and other um, animal species that you interact with where they just, they, they halt their song or they quiet it altogether. I think we hear loud and clear in Mary's love song, this permission for us to continue Mary's singing today in the world, to continue that song together of God's love, of the dramatic possibilities for the world once Jesus is born. What if we did not stop our love song as a church? as a congregation singing and breathing together, our hearts beating as one? What if while apart we continue this love song together in our families, in our homes, to continue it? Sometimes in song, sometimes in action, sometimes it's in what we choose not to engage in, that we continue the song of love that Mary first began? What if in the voice of injustice that we sing, say, speak out, shout out, act out a, a song of justice? What if in the near present danger of hatred or fear or violence, we do not stop singing love. That we do not, as a church, stop living God's love. So when that trans teen gets kicked out of their home for revealing the truth about themselves, what if we do not stop singing of the love that God has for that teen 
and find a way for them to have a safe place to live. What if we together could not look the other way when there is a lack of compassion in the world? And my, do we have so many examples. What if we shout out together a love song toward those who are hurting in our midst and well beyond? What if we're a message of love? What if we're the only voice of love they hear that day? What if we're the ones to sing it? And when you sing, and when I sing, and when all of us together sink our heartbeats and our breath, imagine the possibilities that can then take place. The possibilities of furthering God's love in this world. Let's keep doing what Mary did. Let's keep singing of this love. Amen? Amen.
It's fitting for us this final Sunday of our Advent journey to see where we have been throughout this time together and for, ha for having this remembrance take place in a living room. For that is where we have journeyed together this Advent season. And so as we review our themes, as we come back to where we have been this Advent season, I invite you now to pray with me. God of hope, the flicker of hope has entered into our lives this week with the vaccinations becoming available. Oh God, we hope, we pray that this would be the start of our emergence out of where we've been, a direction in toward healing and wellness, direction out of fear and every day waking up scared. God, we pray for every medical worker and all who will be receiving the vaccination, we pray that this would be the start. Start of the work, of more work that you are doing in the world to bring us peace. And we pray now silently for all the places in our lives all the places even throughout the world who are in need of peace. And so we pray those prayers silently. We pray to you now all of the spaces and places in our lives that are filled with joy, even those we have to find and search out and choose. We offer to you now our own shared prayers of joy. And we pray that your love your transformative, upturning love would be revealed more and more in this world. Love where there is currently hatred, the flicker and flame of food to tide over and fill those who are hungry. Your love to cover the wounds of those who have been hurt spiritually or physically or emotionally. May your love enter every realm of our buildings and our shared spaces and our homes. Your love, O oh God. Now in the quietness of your heart or even out loud, I invite you to continue to pray. We continue now with the prayer that we have been taught. Let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
We step into Sandy's living room today for our offertory and we see the picture of love, love enacted. All of your generosity in purchasing gifts for children in our community so that families would experience the joy and thrill of Christmas and not have to go without. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you again for the ways that you have lived out love in our community. And I heard from Sandy, I heard her say that she wished that every one of us could have experienced the first row view of, of the generosity of our church as she got to experience. She said it was part of what made her Advent journey this year so special. And so we thank you that you have taken seriously our role in the community as a church, our response to the needs. We also, today, collect, and we will continue to collect through the end of the month, uh, one of our five UCC special offerings. This one is called the Christmas Fund. I want you to think about and even name out loud who is a perhaps even UCC pastor, um, but any pastor that you have experienced in your lifetime who is now retired, someone who served the church faithfully and well and touched your heart and shaped your faith and now is in their retirement years. So think of them now or even say their name. Reverend Phil Sweet comes to my mind. And the Reverend Mark Jayberg. And even our own, the Reverend Bob Horst. Now think of if anyone that you have named if they had served a church who could barely afford to pay the salary, maybe they supplemented along the way with home-cooked meals or goods from the garden. Those particular call settings may not have been able to afford to put much, if anything, away for the pastor's pension. And now, even more senior in their years, now the pastors who have served us may be struggling to pay the electricity, struggling to pay the rent, struggling to keep up with the supplemental health plan. And so you have an opportunity to share the love that they once shared with you, the love that has stayed with you all these years. You have the opportunity now to care for these good and faithful servants of the church. Often, too, their spouses, even those who are widowed, or other staff 
people in the United Church of Christ who have served faithfully and well. This is our opportunity to show them the love that they taught us and showed to us. And so anytime this month you have the opportunity to contribute, you can drop off your check at the church, use our secure mail slot, mail in your special offering, or use that feature in your e-giving. We thank you again for all the ways that you give. to a close, I wanted to share with you as a benediction this beautiful work by Tom Schumann, and it comes from a very beloved resource of mine. If you came with a fistful of anger, who could endure? But you come with open hands eager to grasp our own in love. If you came with fire of judgment, who could endure? but you come with the light of grace to show us the way. If you came hardened against our sin, who could endure? But you come holding us in your heart that we might have life. If you come bearing bad news, we might not be able to handle it. Certainly we've had enough already. Can we endure the gift of good news? Even so, come, Lord Jesus, come. Come, Lord Jesus, come, Emmanuel. Come, the bringer and gifter of love. And may the peace of Christ ever be with you.